So uh, first off, let's start off with your name. And um, I think the poker community knows of you, but doesn't know who you are. Can you just tell us your name and who you are? Okay, so in the poker community, my name is Stephanie Ott and also known as Stephanie Postel. And your actual name is Sabina? Sabina, yes. And I just got re I just got married. Um, so it's now Johnson, but so what do you oh, okay. do you want me to call you Stephanie uh, or Sabina? Please Sabina. Okay. Sabina. Um, so let's start from the beginning. How did you meet Mike? I met Michael Postel, Michael Lawrence Postel, um, through Rounders Magazine, and we were in Mississippi. And um, oh my goodness, I can't even remember which town we were in. We've been too many towns. Uh, to remember, but um, I, he was, uh, uh, Mr. Caldwell uh, was the owner, the official owner of Rounders Magazine, and I was hired as a model for him. And, and was, was Mike ahead. working Ever for Caldwell. Rounders Magazine? He was not officially working for him, but he was a quote unquote investor. So I don't know how you want to take that. So potentially an owner of Rounders Magazine? Correct. And so you met because you were doing modeling and Mike was a pro and uh, a part owner of Rounders Magazine and you guys met in Louisiana. Right. So just to clarify for people, you are the mother of Mike's, sorry? In Mississippi, not Louisiana. I'm sorry, Mississippi. So just to clarify okay. for everyone. I just wanted to make sure you caught that. <laughs> so to clarify for everyone, you are the mother of Mike's daughter. I am. Okay. So you guys ended up getting married. When did you get married? In 2011. Um... Well, uh, I would say December 29th, I don't know, because to be honest with you, and I do not mean this in a really rude way, but I kind of like to forget it, but it's a date that I don't ever want to remember, and that's um, being completely honest. So what was it like being married to Mike? Um, a single mom. Um, was he, uh, playing poker a lot while you were married to him? The entire time online trips to Wisconsin trips back to Mississippi. He has a friend in Memphis. He would go play online poker there trips back to Biloxi trips everywhere. Vegas. He had a friend that lived in Vegas. Um, I, it was, I was on my own. Um, so during this time, there uh, may have been an accusation of him cheating online. Is that correct? That is correct. Um, do you remember which poker site yes, that was? He, yes, it was Poker Stars. And uh, Chris Moneymaker was one of the accused, but... I, I, I have no idea if he's involved in that, but uh, Michael Postel was absolutely one of the involved in that situation, and it was a big ordeal. So what happened? How did he end up not getting um, reprimanded for cheating on poker stars? Or uh, it didn't prove anything. Uh what did did they review the hands did they like how did you how did he initially get accused of cheating what did they do they did go over the hands but there was nothing that they could say that would solidify that they could prove that he was cheating and this yeah that's do you think he did cheat at that time 
at that time, I can honestly say I have no idea. Was he um, playing poker with his friends, like on the same table online or anything that you know of? Uh, we did hold a table game actually at our house. And, and um, but he, I would have to to honestly say that he actually lost more than he won so the numbers to me don't add up uh, as but on, far as what he's being discussed uh no i mean when he was accused of cheating online do you know that if he was like logged on online while his friends were logged on and they were all playing on the same virtual table yeah i would say there would be two or three of them and they would all communicate while they were playing or? Oh, yeah. So it, it, do you think that's, because that's typically how people cheat online is they'll, they'll be on the same table and they'll just communicate what they have and they just poach the other players. Did he do stuff like that that you know of? Um, not to my knowledge. Not to my knowledge. So, however, I will tell you that he has very frequently named himself as the fleecer. And if you know the name of a fleecer is a person who scams another person. He takes pride in taking money from other people without them knowing it. And I will tell you, as his former wife who lived with him, I have seen it over and over and over and over again in many different situations it doesn't matter if it's casino related or not so what other ways has he fleeced or scammed people that you saw well uh, the biggest one that i remember was he had his teeth sawed off and taken off and he got these fake teeth put on i'm not sure what they're called but the ones that they glue on and they're supposed to be like permanent for like six years or something veneers or veneers? yeah like veneers yeah well he broke one of them and instead of going back to the dentist and saying hey i broke one of my pieces of, my piece of teeth which was like back here he went to um we were in reno and we were at what casino were we at there it is can't remember the name of it but we were at we were in reno and he he took a piece of meat that was about this size like just like a quarter inch and he set it out on the counter and he, it was left out on the counter. And I went to clean the counter and I said, why is this here? And he said, cause I'm using that for when we go to Reno. Oh, Grand Sierra Resort. That's what it is. Okay. Grand Sierra Resort. So we went to the Grand Sierra Resort and we went to the buffet. And when we went to the buffet, he put that piece of meat that he had just out and he put it in the back of his mouth and then when he went through the buffet he went through the salad which trust me he never eats salad and he put it into like this bowl and he told the lady that it had cracked his tooth just so he could get his tooth paid for another time we were in Las Vegas and because We've gone to so many casinos, so forgive me if it takes me a minute to f remember. But we were, um, what is it, the New Orleans. We were in the New Orleans casino this night, and I had my father and my stepmother come in to come visit us, and the mirror was loose from the wall, and I... Well, as I was, I, he was in the bathroom. So, and we were 
kind of separated at this point, but not fully separated. But anyways, he was in the bathroom with privacy. I was in the the main room with my daughter um, at this time and the mirror was loose while well, I was doing my makeup and the mirror shifted a little. Well, he had the grand idea that we should call the front desk and claim that the mirror came off the desk and almost hit our child. Okay, it was completely his idea. I was just along for the ride again. And so security came, he made the report, I signed off on it. They looked at everything and yes, it was loose, but would it have fallen on our daughter? No, however, it was just another scam. And he bartered with them to get extra free stuff on top of our room's comps. And I honestly cannot remember how many other times there's been like that, but there's been a lot, let me tell you. It's almost constant. He's been arrested in, uh, where was he? Um, Mississippi and, um, uh, two and two like two. I have to look it up, but he's he's been arrested in several different casinos and one for an actual assault against an a security officer. I don't think we care so much about the name of the casino, but just basically what he was doing. Okay, well, it's it starts with a T and it's in Mississippi and I was with him there several times. So I'm surprised that I don't remember, but as I said, I tried to kind of forget these kind of memories because I don't want to remember them. They're so traumatic. Um, so I'm curious why you decided to, cause you and I have been in contact and, and just for the viewers, I'm sure p- people are curious why you decided to now talk to me about this. Because I feel like the truth should be told. And I, my father, my father is a poker player and my father has been in this industry for years. Like, I mean, years. And he's still a dealer today. And My father told me, I, I, cause I went to him first and foremost. And I said, dad, do you really think that he's cheating? Do you think that he cheated? And my dad said, without a doubt, the numbers do not lie. Well, there's no other person. I, I believe him. So I reached out to you because number one, There's been a lot of people have been robbed of their money through this issue. Number two, he cannot continue getting away from his, with his fleecing or whatever he wants to call it, but stealing from people, it's not okay. And number three, I feel like I'm doing the right thing. Well, I think on behalf of everyone listening, uh, I appreciate that and I respect that decision Um, and thank you so much for doing this. Now, I wanted to ask you about Mike's mom, because there's a lot of gossip within the poker community that Mike's mom is really helping him in a lot of ways, helping him legally. Can you tell us about Mike's mom? Yes. Mrs. Rose Postle is Mike's mom. Um, she is 100% financially backing him right now. She's the one paying for his attorneys. She's the one behind everything, everything. So I don't know where the money that he stole went to, but it. So has Mike's mom filed legal papers or legal filings on his behalf? Yes, um, she, the work. Okay, I cannot 100% confirm this because I'm not in Sacramento, California, but the word is that I've been told by Mr. Mike Apostle is that his mother has a really good friend that's in the courthouse who is filing papers for her. 
and him on his behalf. Does Mike Postle's mom work at a law firm? And um, not to my knowledge as of right now, she worked at the church last of my knowledge, but I have no idea because I've not had much communication with her. Did she used to work for a law firm? Yes, she did. So she has connections with lawyers and the courthouse. Correct. Um, has she or Mike Possel ever filed a lawsuit uh, against people previously? Yes. Do you know who that was? Um, against, well, I don't have the name specific, but the last place that he rented a house from, he uh, filed a lawsuit about stepping and falling in a hole that wasn't announce. Um, and he's filed a couple lawsuits, I think, against um, like smaller incidents having to do with motor vehicles. And every time he's been in a motor vehicle, um, let me just say that there's a lot of corruption there. So as, okay. as you were saying, do you know if... Um... Mike had his mother file any papers in this latest, uh, in the latest lawsuit that where he sued everyone. I have no idea. Um, cause him and I have, we don't have very good communication. Um, however, what I do know is that he has been asking me to drill you for questions so that he can try and pin you to the wall. And those were his words. Um, that's quite interesting. And what does he, what does he think about all of this? Like when you say he's trying to drill you, trying to get you to work with him or for him to try to get, you know, get me somehow. Um, wh what else has he asked you to do through this, this whole entire process of him cheating? He has asked me to keep my mouth quiet about previous issues that I know about. He has told me that he will take child custody of our daughter if I don't cooperate. And he basically said that um, if I don't do what he asked me to do, that the whole poker community is going to come down on me. And I don't. I'm sure you know that's not but, true. Yeah, but I, I don't even involve myself in that anymore. Has he admitted to cheating to you at all? No, he completely denies it. But I can tell you one thing. I know when he's lying. Is he? Do you think he's lying when he denies it? Absolutely. 100% without a doubt. Do you? And that's coming from his previous wife. <laughs> Do you know who his current friends are that potentially helped him with this cheating? Um, yes, I do. Um, I would have to look up my phone and get back to you on that one. But yes, I do. Um, I know that, um, hold on, uh, Moneymaker was one of them. And Moneymaker, Ever Caldwell, and uh, the other ones I would have to get back to you on. Those are the two that I was most familiar with that I know about. And Ever Caldwell was the biggest one because there's a backstory to that. When Michael Postle was working with a uh, rounder and they got overtaken by the other family that took the rounder magazine there was that whole lawsuit and then now ever now just recently got it back now ever is very thankful for uh, it for having his uh, magazine back and so now he is trying to say thank you to michael Apostle and his way of saying thank you is by trying to back him up on his lies. Um, so let's just go back to Moneymaker. I know Moneymaker was his friend. 
I did yeah. not think that there was any cheating involved in money maker from money maker. Can you get into more detail about that? Um, I can't give you exact details. I can just tell you that him and him and money maker have been like this from day one and still to this day. So that's the best information I can there's, give you. They're still friends. How do you know they're still friends right now? Because he sent me messages um, maybe five months ago, four months ago, that they were still friends and that Chris Moneymaker and him were still talking. And that's where he was getting some of this information from. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm just kind of shocked to hear that because I thought once Chris realized that Mike was involved in cheating, Chris stepped away from their friendship. And that might have been on the same timeline and maybe Chris was just being kind of like kosher with it. I'm not sure about that whole situation. And I've always known Moneymaker to, I've always known Chris to be like a really genuine good person. So um, I don't think that he had any knowledge about anything that was going on. I absolutely 100% believe this was all Mike's, Mr. Postle's stealing. I don't think that Mike had any knowledge about it. I mean, Chris. Mean Chris. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Yeah, maybe that. Yeah, I don't. I don't. I don't think Chris Moneymaker had any do, any any knowledge about what was going on. Absolutely not. But but I don't, you, but I they, don't think he, he is still in contact with him. You're saying. Correct. Yes, that is correct. So um, there's just like a lot to unpack here. Do you know who Russ Hamilton is? Yes. Was Mike close with Russ Hamilton? Yes. Um, do you remember when Mike got on that Blackjack show? Um. I had already left him at that time, so no. Um, so I would guess, um, let's see. I, I couldn't give you an exact number of a, a date or time because it was after I had already left him. Do you have any information about Mike being involved with Russ and the cheating scandal at all? Because Russ Hamilton I know that was he involved in told a cheating me scandal. That they had, yeah, I, I don't have any information about them being involved in the cheating st scandal, but I know that he said that they had, his quote was, they had something up their sleeve. And that's what I was told. Um, Besides fleecing people outside of poker, do you know any other times where Mike tried to uh, cheat people in poker? Aside from being accused on poker stars? No. Um, Just poker stars. That would be the only other time. So... Were you working at Stones at any point? Yes, I was one of the first um, bartenders and um, poker officiants that worked there. I was there from day one, and I but I only worked there for approximately eight months until I left. Did you know Justin Caritas? I did. Were Mike and Justin Caritas close friends? Yes, they were. How, like, how close? He didn't come over to our house, but they would talk and cabobulate at the, when they were playing poker, which was all the time. Yeah, they were quite close when I was, um, you know, during the time that there was cheating going on. Um, and there's also the other casino that they showed up and forgive me because it's been a while, but, um, the other small casino that's not in, that's not stones, but, um, Casino Royale. I know there's no, quite a few that one. kind of closed down 
in Sacramento. Yeah. There is another one. Um, Was it the one that Justin worked at? Yeah. Yeah, that one. So they they would they would play there um quite often too. Um did Mike tell you anything about Justin Caritis um during this cheating scandal? I knew that they were a acquaintances but that's it he didn't really tell me much um what kinds of things was mike saying to you during this cheating scandal well told me bonnie and clyde that's what he said Bonnie and Clyde, what does that mean? He wanted you to be... In other words, we're in it together and he wanted me to be part of it, but I didn't want to have anything to do with it. That's why I left. Um, this is during the scandal, after it already broke open? After it already broke open. So he basically right wanted you to... open, he shut up and do what he wanted me to do and then he tried to use our daughter as leverage so what has he each other. so has he taken your daughter away he has her right now and he's not letting her come back to me and i'm supposed to have her right now sorry to hear that mm -hmm. um and he's just holding her and won't let you see her as leverage as leverage yeah as leverage why does he want to use that leverage against you because he needs to i'm thinking he's afraid of well, me doing this i think he was afraid that i was going to actually tell somebody what they said and this is not even half of all the horrible things he's done it has nothing this is like okay take this much and there's that much. And this is not because I'm upset that because he's taken my daughter, this is me being honest. Yeah. I yeah. have a husband, two other children. It's, it's not about, it's not about leverage. It's about, he just, and I think he just always wants to win. And that's what he always tells me. And he has to conquer and whatever, but this is me finally finally saying like he's not a good person this is me out in the open saying he is not a good person he's not an honest person if he can cheat you he will if he can steal from you he will if he can take from you he will whatever he has to do he will and i i i, I swear on my life that I mean this genuinely, very genuinely. And this is somebody who's gone through it for years and years and years. I'm being honest about this. No, I, I believe you. I 100% believe you. I mean, I've had to deal with it. So Mike was often this like nice guy in the poker room who tipped a lot. Um, do you, is that, just a part of his facade, a part of his swindling? Yep, that's this. What was he like behind, clo behind closed doors? What was he like when no one was around? Well, in what atmosphere are you asking? I'm, I'm just wondering, like, because of this public persona of being this nice guy who tips a lot and, you know, drinking and having fun. And then I'm wondering if that's for show, what is he actually saying about people? What is he actually like behind closed doors? He, um, well, middle grounds with other people who don't matter. So if you don't matter, he's middle grounds. So in other words, that's like, um, this person and the whatever he bad mouths a lot of people 
I can say that. Um, a lot of people, especially at the poker table, but you know, that kind of comes with the territory. But as far as, if you're asking as far as people go in general, um, it's kind of bipolar. So I don't know how else to explain it. Yeah, no, that makes sense. The best way sometimes I can he's explain nice, it some, is bipolar. Yeah, sometimes he's nice, sometimes he's not nice. And is Mike living in Sacramento right now? Um, he's not actually in Sacramento, but he's close by. He's in one of the other cities, the address that I gave that yeah. I have for him. Is he living with his mom now? Uh, not to my knowledge. I have no idea. Um, do you do you know that he owes Todd money for his legal fees and that he has a hearing with me this month? Ooh, I was not aware of that. Yeah, he's going to have that to owe me. That would explain why he's being such an asshole today. He's yeah, been yeah, he's not so nice to me today. Um, he's and gonna... he was still refusing to, to give me my daughter for the summer. Uh, how often do you talk to Mike? Not very often. He usually ignores my phone calls and my text messages, but today I got a whole bunch of them. Uh, what was he saying today? Mm -hmm. Can you still see me, even though you're not on the screen? Uh, no, but I can hear you. So if you want to read okay. them. All right. So I will tell you what he said. My goodness, there's like a thousand of them. <sighs> well, then I'm going back. You can, if you want, send me screenshots and I can put them in the video. Okay, I'll if do that. That'll be easier because there's a lot of them. So we'll go back on Zoom. Okay, there's a lot of them. I have like two messages and there's like six messages that I wrote, like paragraph messages. I had to have my husband come on. Yeah. Um. So does he often try to... Um... It seems like during this process, he has turned this into some elaborate scheme, you know, like he, he thinks that he needs to go through 10,000 hours of videos of my YouTube channel to find me, find out why I'm, you know, doing this to him. And like, it feels like everything's an elaborate scheme with him. Is he, and, and asking you to like, you know, gotcha me. Um, is he typically like that? Is that the, his functionality? Absolutely. Once he gets caught, it's like picking up a mouse. Okay. You're caught. I picked you up. I got you by the tail. Okay. Now what are you going to do? Squirm, 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 squirm. That's exactly what he's doing right now. And that's exactly what he's been doing. And I stand by you 100% on this situation. You stick to your guns. You already got him. Like, I mean, I don't mean got him. Like, that's not what I'm trying to say. What I'm trying to say is that he's very good at manipulation. There's a reason why he's a poker player in the first place. And there's a reason why he's gotten away with his schemes so long and everything there's a reason why he's gone away with a lot of things for so long he's just upset and irritated because now somebody has actually got the balls for lack of better words to actually say hey this you're cheating you're doing this you're doing that Exactly. That's why he's squirming. It's like a mouse. He's squirming because he got picked up. So I'm curious about this, like cheating stuff and what you've, I know that you've been in contact with him, obviously, because you're the mother of his child, but um, 
has he said anything about um like someone else at stones you know helping him or being his friend or any any has he alluded to anything no Mm -mm. no no he hasn't but that was also after that i left stones yeah that would have been right after I left Stones, but he's not alluded to anything um, as, as then I can remember. Did you have, so like during the time that he was cheating before I went public with it, he was making a good amount of money. He was probably bringing home a good amount of money. What was he saying to you during that time? Um. Well, again, I was not actually living there. I had already left him at that time. Yeah, but so were you guys were in contact. Did he say anything about it? He just said he was doing good in poker, but, but um, he doesn't normally talk about his finances specifically if he's doing good. So he wouldn't have told me either which way. Did anything change in his life with his finances when he was cheating like did you notice any big purchases or anything oh absolutely brought a brand new vehicle he put in his mom's name and then they switched titles they bought another brand new there it was a an infinity yes i remember his infinity uh and then they bought another a brand new vehicle which i think it was mercedes but i i can't be sure on that one all in his mom's name Yep, they all in his mom's name. Yep, they they put everything in her name, and yeah, they I, I, everything. And then he 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 had already moved houses, and then um, oh, he has not been hurting for cash at all. <laughs> Trust me, no. Um, do you think he's hurting for cash now? No. I've heard through uh, people have been messaging me on my social media saying that he's um, involved in crypto and involved in trading of cards like sports cards or whatever and doing other things to make money. Do you know anything about that? I do not have any knowledge about that. I wouldn't put it past him to do any trading of cards but i would say probably not because he's not very tech savvy so when this case when he first dropped this lawsuit did he tell you that he was going to sue me and everyone else oh yeah he told me to contact you and make friends with you so that i could get information from you to use for him absolutely 100 percent. it's exactly what he told me do you know anything about this director who wanted to do a documentary? He's all, the only thing I know is he said he was out of LA. That's the only thing I know. I can go through my text messages and maybe message it to you later if I find any information, but I don't, I, I was never given a direct name, but it was through LA and he just said it was somebody who was involved with Ever Caldwell, who was the owner of Rounders. So do you think that um, the documentary then was pitched uh, to make Mike look better and not like a cheater since it was it was introduced to Mike through Browners magazine? Oh, without a doubt. Absolutely. Um, do you think that the lawsuit was filed because Mike actually wanted to file it or was it so that the documentary would look better? Yeah, because the documentary can look better and then so he can make money off of it. Again, please, sir. Do you think he, I think he was a little taken back when I served an anti-slap for him to, to him. And now he owes me my legal fees because he canceled the lawsuit. Do you think he was expecting that? I do not. I think he was expecting that he was going to get away with whatever he thought he was going to get away with. Which was, I, I think he thought he was going to get away scot free. But there are some people in this world that are not that stupid. 
So let's dive into, um, like you said, the, the Rounders Life magazine owner introduced Mike to this director, David Boone. He contacted me too. So, sure. so let's go back to what you said. The owner of Rounders Life, what's his name again? Uh, Rounder Magazine, his name is Ever Caldwell. Ever Caldwell. And he introduced, he basically was the reason why this producer was introduced to Mike, ever introduced Mike to the producer? Correct. Yeah. So this is the conversation that I had. Mike, Mike Paso called me on the phone and he was like, I need help. And this is what's going on. Blah, 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 blah. Like he was telling me about you. He's telling me about other people. Okay. A lot of stuff was going through my ears, but what he was mostly telling me is that, Oh, Everett just got the rights back to his magazine. And now Everett Caldwell is helping me in uh, this lawsuit right now. So that is an interesting to a producer who wants to make it into a movie and he's out of LA. So that is correct. It would be Ever Coldwell through whatever the producer is out David of Boone. LA. And that would be the tie, the tie string. So I, I find right. this to be quite interesting. Mm -hmm. So the, I had a suspicion that Mike somehow um, was was like this, this documentary was going to be used to make him look innocent. And that's very interesting to me that um, Rounder's Life introduced Mike to this producer and kind of got this whole process going. Was Mike alluding to trying to make money off of this documentary? Oh, of course. The, he and, doesn't do anything that doesn't allude to money. So... Did he, um, was he saying that it was going to show that he's innocent? Yes. From your perspective? He said it... that they were even going to make a book off, off of him. Who was going to make the book? So did he, did he, from your perspective, did it, um, was it basically a setup to make Mike look good? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I know Rounder's Life, it's obvious to all of us that Rounder's Life, sometimes we think it's Mike posing as Rounder's Life. Do you think Mike has ever posed as Rounder's Life on Twitter? Or used um, their Twitter? I I, I don't know because I've only been on Twitter like two times in the last year or so. <laughs> I don't know. Has has Mike ever to told you that he's created fake Twitter accounts and... and uh... Oh, yeah. He'll go to whatever extent that he needs to. Has he ever told you that he has? Yeah. Was this during the cheating scandal? Absolutely. Yep. Did he give you any details? He said I would be this person and that person and that person. And I told him I didn't want to know about it. That's interesting. Um, has he ever cyber bullied people before? Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> yes. Can you tell me who or when or what? I couldn't give you names or no, I just turned a, a blind eye to it, to be honest with you, because I didn't want anything to do with it because I don't do that. So I can't tell you, I, I can give you like years, like 2010, 2012, 2000. What was it around? Like, what did the person do to him that he started bullying them for? Gambling, poker, poker mostly, like um, people that he had personal like emails to. Um, that was the most, that's the most frequent one and the most, I would say probably about, if I had to say 
six times a year, at least different people, six different people a year. Then and he then, has cyber bullied. Yeah. And then our land, our landlord in two th- that would be in 2010 that one i do specifically remember but i don't remember his name either he bullied your landlord yep we got How- kicked out of our house because of it what did mike do to bully him he didn't pay rent he lost in gambling and he didn't tell me about it I was pregnant, working graveyard shift and trying to cover our rent. And then I got a notice on the front door and yeah. Um, But what did Mike do to the landlord um, as far as like bullying him? Oh, sent him continuous messages, threatening him, telling him he was going to beat him up and uh curse words and stuff and he's a poor old man you know whatever so he should have paid the rent so does is does mike have a history of just like bullying people when he doesn't get his way yes and anger um is he dangerous like has he ever hurt you yes he's been he's gone to jail three times since when we were to Oh, you cut out. You said he's gone to jail three okay. times. Oh, yeah. Since we've been together. Um, Once in Las Vegas and twice in Sacramento. What did he go to jail for in those three times? Uh, domestic violence, domestic abuse. And the last one was corporal injury on a spouse. All three times hurting yes. you. He took a yeah, on me and one was in front of our daughter. But he took anger management class and paid his way out of it. And so he got off scot-free basically. When you say even on his record. When you say he paid his way out of it, did his mom help him with that? Yep. I'm so sorry to hear that. That's okay. She she's been there like Aside from the custody stuff, because she she doesn't want us to be together. But as far as Mike and I are concerned, she's she's bailed him out of everything, and she doesn't care what he does wrong. And it's wrong. You think she's an enabler to him? Exactly is what I'm getting at. Yep. Um. So Mike has a is um, banned from some properties in Las Vegas. Oh yeah, Harris properties. So what happened with that? So his story is that a girl came up to them and they were, I don't know. What happened is he tried to hit a security guard when he was drunk. And that's just the bottom line. Doesn't matter what the other story is. Does he? <laughs> Nobody cares. He seem he sounds like he has a violent past. Do you think that there's a potential that he could hurt someone that has wronged him? Absolutely. That's a little scary, given everything. Oh, trust me. There's a reason why I moved out to Oregon in the first place. Because you were afraid of him? I didn't ever thought about it. <laughs> Did you? Are you saying that you moved out because you're afraid of him? Yeah, that's exactly why I moved. And I had a protection order against him. When did that And then end? he showed up at my work. Sorry, there you go. You said he showed up at your work? Oh, yeah. He showed up at my work and stalked me here in Oregon. Absolutely. He asked all my coworkers where I lived and everything while I was not there. And then he sent me text messages telling me that he knew where I worked and um, what hours I worked. And I don't know, just like little, little tidbits that was enough to be like scary as a female, but not enough to like, let you know, like, where are you? 
Oh yeah. I I have I actually have a service protection dog now because of him. Seriously. And I bought him I I got my service protection dog right after Mike the last time Mike showed up at my work. And that's the reason why I got my dog. And I love him to death. I love my dog, my dog to death. But that's the reason why I got him. Seriously. So you're afraid no of Mike aside. now? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm, if, if I was a single mom right now, I, I would have a German shepherd in my house, but my husband is here now, so I'm okay. But yes, I am, I am still scared of him. <sighs> this is just kind of sad. I find Mike to be a very sad human and He's I feel... I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't know why he can't just be happy and be himself and go on with his life and do his own things. I don't get any of it. I don't get it. Do you think he has a gambling addiction? Yes. Um, while you were with him, does, did he do more gambling? I mean, I don't think poker is necessarily gambling, but did he do other things while you were with him? Yes. Like what? um craps um slot machine slot machines were his favorite but craps was his second favorite um blackjack uh pack um and then um yeah that's pretty much it uh three card poker sometimes but yeah all of the above so what do you, what is Mike? Yeah, that was the one I was, sorry. I didn't care. No, I you're fine. You're fine. You're connected. It's just, it's the connection. Um, so what has Mike told you that he is up to now? Like what's his next step you think, or what has he told you? He told me to contact you make friends with you, send you, send him my text messages from you so that he could use them against you, which I don't understand that, but okay, whatever. And as far as the stuff in the poker industry, he hasn't told me anything. He basically said he was laying low and I'm not buying into any of it. Why aren't you buying into any of it? Because I don't trust him. And because I know what kind of person he is. I know exactly what kind of person he is. And I'm not, I can't live with myself if I stand behind a monster. I won't do it. And he is a monster. And by that, I mean a liar and a cheater and a thief. Did you know that Mike was in a game while he was cheating with a man who was dying of cancer? No. Yeah, it's like, he's pretty terrible. Um, but um, is there anything that I haven't asked you about that you want to let people know about? Not that I can think of, but all I can say is you can't trust him. Don't trust him. Michael Apostle is not to be trusted, but please leave my daughter out of it. And a yeah. Apostle, not. I've often... I've, I've often said, like, you know, if, if people bring up your daughter, I'm, I like cut that out. Oh, and that's one and... thing he brought up to me too. He brought up, he tried to tell me that you tried to go to her school or some, uh, and I was like, wait, what? He told me that, it, that because of your post that you or one of your comadres we're going to Annabella's school to pick her up 
that was his accusation. Okay. And then do what? And I don't take it from. Him. And then yeah, do exactly. what? Exactly. <laughs> I don't believe it. And I don't, exactly. I don't believe it, and I don't. I know it's not true. Hence, why nothing happened <laughs> at that point. What so called? So, so what? But that's what he actually told me. So that's the point that he's willing to go to. That's what kind of person he is. Well, and I mean, they, if he's willing to steal from a man dying of cancer, then he's probably willing to throw his daughter in there as leverage somehow. Um, I can I can tell you, I can assure you that I live in the Bay Area, nowhere near, I don't even know where Mike lives and I've never been to his house and I actually don't even talk about your daughter to anyone or and it's that I'd like that to be left out of most conversations because I'm a decent human being unlike Mike. Well, I appreciate that and thank you because it hurts my heart that somebody can be so cruel and so ugly because save me. I have a beautiful it's gay pride month. My And I fully support her. And so it's. <laughs> you're. It's sorry, it's a, Sabina. You're cutting. You're cutting. Oh, there you. There we go. <laughs> oh, no, you guys are beautiful. That's awesome. It's just sad that like some thing. So, so much, so much, you know, like anger or hatred or whatever in the world. I don't know because I don't get it. I don't get it because I'm not a mad person. I mean, don't get me wrong. My mommy claws come out. <laughs> yeah. But, okay. Yeah, well, I'm not a mad person. I know that it I took mean, a I just want to let you know, like, I know the video is cutting out a bit, but I want to really sincerely tell you that I appreciate your time and I appreciate your strength. And I know it took a lot because you and I have been um, chatting for months. I know it took a lot for you to do this. And I think on behalf of the poker community, we really just empathize with your situation and we're really sorry. And I'm really sorry to see what he's putting you through. And um, I just appreciate your strength and you doing this. That's and right. Thank you. Let me know if you need anything else. Uh, I'm I'm right here with you. Okay. Thanks. I really sincerely appreciate that, and um, I just uh, I hope he doesn't lose his shit. Oh, he's gonna lose his shit the second he sees this. So it's whatever, but you know what? The great thing about this, I have a wonderful husband in the next room who doesn't put me through shit and who takes care of me and I have beautiful children, hopefully. And if this continues, I'm just going to go skip with my daughter on my own. <laughs> but yeah. No. Well, I hope he doesn't, doesn't. Yeah. I hope things go well. Um, I, I'm going to go through this and edit it right now. And okay. if you're okay with everything that you've said, um, just text me. I'm if you change fine it. with everything I've said. So you edit it however you want to be. You're I'm just going to edit out the like blank spots and stuff, but I'll keep everything else. Okay. All right. If there's anything else you need, just let me know. No. Thank you. And I appreciate your time. And um, I know it's late, but happy Mother's Day. Oh, thank you. Oh, you happy Mother's Day too. Thank mm -hmm. you. All right. All right take care. Day. Have a good rest of your day. Bye. Bye. This, I'm sure you heard that. It's going to go straight to my computer. Any question I ask you that you don't want to talk about, I'll just be like, I don't want to talk about it. And I'll just edit that out. And if you talk about something okay. and then you like 
think about it later and you're like, I don't know if I want that, that's fine too. Just let me know. I'm not here to okay. like, I'm not here to make you feel shitty for anything you say. So whatever you want to talk about, we'll talk about. Okay. All right. Sounds good. 